what's the real progression of how you would implement a network service? Right? So we're going to start with hardware appliances. Right? We've seen that the, the market's research is bullish on moving to virtual, but let's recognize we have plenty of existing appliance-based solutions out there. Nothing wrong with being there, but the market is moving. So again, it's moving to virtualization. So we take that single software instance that ran on proprietary hardware, now we run a single virtual software instance on a commercial off-the-shelf platform. So that's actually already been happening. Matter of fact, it's been happening for years. This isn't new. People have already been deploying virtual applications running on software in data centers for a while. But the next step, the one that we're really going to talk about and provide hopefully some background and education on is network function virtualization as the next step. That's where you truly can begin to take advantage of operational efficiency and capital expense savings the NFV can deliver. So the market, as indicated by the market research firms, have already started to buy virtual SBCs. Many of those are now being implemented, as we are, as network function virtualization, which allows orchestration of these virtual software instances on an open platform. Again, I'll get a bit more into the details of what that means. But really, as I said, the next step is to move to a, to a session border controller or any application for that matter that you want a uh, network service that you want to put into a virtual environment and move to something that's cloud native. So it can be orchestrated and have multiple of these virtual network functions that are broken down into its component pieces and delivers some of that flexibility and efficiency and performance that are individually based on individual functions. And I'll explain why that's important as we go through this. So as we talk about this, as I talk about this, you know, there's a there's a, a path that we've seen. We've seen this path with our customers. We've seen this path in discussions. But the real point I want to bring out is you can actually take advantage of that learning curve, the advantage of the learning curve. We've had in dealing with customers the advantage of what people have learned and told us as they've worked through these, certainly the advantage of what the industry's learned as it's done, you know, multiple of these initiatives and share them at uh, industry forums and conferences. You can move ahead on the learning curve. You don't necessarily have to go through that path. You can jump onto the network function virtualization bandwagon today. It won't stop you from going through the virtualization over to NFV and all that. It depends where you are as a, as a company, where you are with your, your plans and how you are ready to move forward. I think it's important to understand that, that things have been out there for several years now. The market's taken an uptick. Take advantage of that and jump ahead. One last slide I want to show uh, on this whole VNF and, and what the market looks like and how people are doing stuff is a deployment model. Uh, as I said, you know, things were a little confusing when I started. What does this mean? Where do I put these VNFs, the software running on a server somewhere? Well. Starting on the far left, you can put that software in a service provider's data center, in a centralized data center. You can put it in a data center that might be out at the edge of your network if you've got more than one data center. You can actually deploy virtual network functions on servers running on customer premise. And that's getting a big, uh, a lot of attention in the industry about what are the functions that run best out of the customer premise and why. Which ones do I want to run at the edge? Maybe I just have one centralized data center. Okay, that's fine. The real key, though, is that box in the middle titled VNF Controller Orchestrator. And again, the source of this graphic is from IDC, so they, they use a, these generic terms. But that VNF Controller Orchestrator, the, the thing that's going to manage the life cycle of these VNFs is centralized. And you get efficiencies by centralizing the management control regardless of where the software is deployed. So ultimately, the decision for where to place a specific VNF will depend on the application use case, the kind of infrastructure you have, whether it's what its readiness is, what the aggregate traffic conditions are, your technical knowledge, your deployment comfort levels. There's a lot of things that go into this.